Chag Sameach, Moadim Lesimcha. This is Rabbi Manny Vinyas. I wanted to uh, go over a couple of things. The first, I just got my shipment of lulavim and etrogim, and uh, I wanted to go over the two, the two different ways of setting up the lulav and etrog, the traditional ways. The first is the Ashkenazic uh, arrangement, where the lulav is, of course, the palm branch, which is the crown of the palm tree. Uh, when it matures, when it grows, it opens into the full branch of the, uh, of the palm branches. That goes in the middle, and then it is surrounded by a holder that is made out of palm branches. Uh, that holder will have two, uh, two aravot, which are branches from a willow tree, and three hadasim, which are branches from a myrtle tree. They are set up separately, but uh, next to the lulav, and then when you use the etrog, you take the etrog and you put them together, and that gives you the four species. The Torah says, lachem that they should be taken on the first day, and these four are the actual symbols that the Torah wants us to use for the bracha on the, on the Sukkot. There is another way to set up the lulav and etrog, that is the one that I just showed, is the traditional Ashkenazic one. The Sephardic one will take the lulav and etrog, it uses the same exact four species, and what it does is that rather than using the holder, it will take the hadasim and the aravot, and it will set it up right at the base of the lulav. And what we do is that we take off branches, we take off leaves from the lulav, tear them off, we split it in half, and we make rings. And those rings are going to provide a way of bringing together the hadasim, the aravot. So you place one hadas, one arava, another hadas in the middle, another arava next to it, and another one of the hadasim next to that so that they surround each other, and then you create a ring. Are you able to see this in the camera? Mm -hmm. You create a ring around it, and you bind it like this, and you tuck it into the, into the binding, and that allows you to bring all of the different symbols together. Now let me, as I do this, I wanted to explain a little bit about the symbolism of this. There is a midrash, that talks about the symbolism of the lulav and the trog. The first, of course, is the large lulav that does not have um, smell, but it does have taste because people do eat the heart of the palm. And then you have the uh, aravot, which are the willow branches that do not have flavor and do not have smell. And then you have hadasim, that do have a smell, but they don't have a good flavor. And then you have the etrog, which will have a good smell and a good flavor. According to our rabbis, these are the different types of Jewish people. Some people have a lot of learning, but they don't have mitzvot. That would be the good smell versus the, versus the, um, the good taste. The etrog, since it has both good taste and good smell, it represents a Jew who studies Torah and also does mitzvot. The symbolism then is to bring everyone together in this arrangement so that both the righteous and also the less righteous are bound together. And the symbolism of bringing it together this way is that this is what brings the presence of God that attracts the Shekhinah, the unity of the Jewish people. The opportunity for us to take the lulav and etrog, and to move them together, to shake them together, is a symbol of all Jews coming together to interact together. And that is what brings peace and love to the world. May it be so this year during Sukkot. Chag Sameach.